I can define a certain relation on the integers that's going to be a special kind of relation called an equivalence relation as follows. This is going to be defining an equivalence relation on the integers. This is just one example of an equivalence relation by saying that A and B, any two integers are equivalent. A and B are assumed to be integers here. I use this little tilde symbol as one symbol for equivalent. There are other symbols in the book actually mentions other symbols. If and only if, IFF is shorthand for if and only if. It's not an official word in English, right? But that's a mathematician's shorthand for if and only if. If and only if two divides B minus A. So in words, this is saying A is equivalent to B. This is saying if and only if. And this symbol is saying two divides B minus A. Hey, wait a minute. I thought we're not doing subtraction. Well, we are doing subtraction right now. Okay. <laughs> we're not thinking about it as a group operation, but we are doing subtraction right here. Two divides B minus A. Wait, what, what, what am I doing there? Am I saying take two and divide by B minus A? No. I'm saying two divides evenly into B minus A, you might even say. In other words, B minus A is, is even. I.e. B minus A is even. Why is this an equivalence relation? Actually, I don't know it's an equivalence relation yet. I haven't proved it. Why is this an equivalence relation? What does it mean to be an equivalence relation on the integers here? Okay, well, I'm, I, it is. I'm essentially going to prove it right now. Proof. When you prove something's an equivalence relation, there's three things you have to do. Three properties you have to show. They're called reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. And it's nice to put them in alphabetic order. Reflexive, symmetric, transitive. R-S-T. They're even right next to each other in the alphabet. I'm going to go ahead and take the liberty of not writing sentences here for the sake of speed, because we got also need to prove something's one-to-one -one here. Reflexive property, how do you, what's that? I need to show that A is equivalent to itself. Given any integer, Z. If I was writing this as a sentence, I'd wanna say, let A be an integer. Let A be an element of Z to start off with, but I'm, I'm not writing sentences. How do I show that? I need to show two divides A minus A. Well, A minus A is zero. Yes, two divides zero, any number divides zero. This is true because two divides A minus A since two divides zero, any number divides zero. I'm not dividing by zero there. I'm not doing two divided by zero. I'm saying two divides zero. Why? Since zero equals zero times two, that's why. Dividing, two dividing a number means that number is even. It means it's two times some integer. Yeah, zero is two times some integer. Two times zero. Maybe I should have written this the other way, two times zero. It's even. Okay. What about the symmetric property? Assume, assume A is equivalent to B, show B is equivalent to A. This assumption means two divides A minus B. A minus B is even. I've got to show B minus A is also even. Well, isn't that obvious? Yeah, but you have a little reason. This implies there exists an integer k, say, I like to make my little k's cursive, such that 
a minus b equals two times k. What do I want to show? I want to show b minus a is even. This, by the way, is a little equivalent symbol. I didn't do a good job of making it. And I didn't do a good job of making an arrow there. I want to show b minus a is even. We'll just take this equation and multiply both sides by negative one and write it like this. K is an integer, so negative K is an integer. It's the additive inverse of K. This means two divides B minus A. That's the symmetric property. Last property is called the transitive property, RST. Transitive. Assume A is equivalent to B and B is equivalent to C show B is equivalent to C. A being equivalent to B and B being equivalent to C implies there exist integers, what should I call them? I could call them S, I'll call them S and T. S and T such that A minus B, oh, you know what? I guess I wrote, <laughs> I was inconsistent. Um, I said A is equivalent to B if B divides two minus A. Let me go back up here and, and change this to A minus B here. It doesn't matter, but just for the sake of consistency with how I did my proofs. A minus B is two times S and B minus C is two times T. What's my goal? My goal is to show a minus C is typo. A minus C is two times something. I should have put an A there, sorry. How do I do that? How about adding these two equations? The Bs will cancel. <clears throat> You're left with A minus C equals two S plus two T, which is two times S plus T, two times an integer. Therefore, A is equivalent to C. Back up here, I should have said, therefore, B is equivalent to A. Doing this fast, I'm making some mistakes. That went by too fast. You can rewatch part of the, the video here. Mm -hmm. Can you just, what do you say with mm. that line with the A and mm. B is equivalent to C? You don't get that. What am I saying here? Um, no, I'm sorry. It was, it was a little like, sorry. What does there exist such that it is an element of the integers right there in the middle? You're pointing at it. Yeah. What's what's confusing? What exists such that there's an element of the integers? There exists integers S and T where this property is true. Oh, I thought it was such that. Okay, sorry. I see. Yeah, it's a such that. That one is the S and T, I thought. Okay. <clears throat> so, okay, if we go a little bit over so I can get the one to one in as well. You got a nine o'clock class or not? You do? Okay. I'll try to just go to like two minutes over. Okay. This equivalence relation, it is one because it satisfies the reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties. This is the kind of thing you need to do to prove it's an equivalence relation generates what's called a partition of the integers into two equivalence classes. The equivalence class containing zero and the equivalence class containing one. The one containing zero are all the numbers that are equivalent to zero, which are all the even numbers. Those are all the numbers such that if you subtract zero, you get an even number. And the equivalence class containing one is all the odd numbers because these are all the, the numbers that if you subtract one, you get an even number. Equivalence classes always do this. Equivalence relations always do this, I should say. They always break up the set into pieces that are disjoint, non-overlapping, and whose union is the entire set. No overlap here, and you union these two sets, you get the entire set of integers.
It's called a partition. Very important. 